I was recently on this podcast where I was asked some really good questions, questions that I had never been asked before. And the answers I gave made me think. I never shared this stuff on my YouTube channel and I think it's time that you all get to know a little bit more about me and why and how I started this life abroad. Hi, my name is Jasmine. My husband Gozi and I are expats who have lived in both India and Morocco. I love to travel and when I can, I love trying new foods too. Gozi and I are back in the US preparing for our next move abroad. And today, I'm finally sharing my expat journey, the highs, the lows, everything in between from the beginning. But first, let me go back, a little bit back before my expat life began. I used to work in STEM education and I was just so inspired all the time with the work that I did and the people that I served. I primarily served young women and girls and it was just a really fun job. It was challenging, but I really enjoyed it and I felt very fulfilled and very accomplished with the work that I was doing. I was making natural hair videos around the same time as well and I was actually doing pretty well. Like my hair was growing, my channel was growing and all of the things were happening. And then something amazing also happened in my life. My now husband asked me to marry him and I had a very tough decision. Obviously the decision to marry him was a yes. The challenge came in what that yes was also tied to. I had to leave this job that I really liked and that I was really doing well in and I found so much purpose and it was okay because the life that I chose was a promise of more and love and all the things that I currently have now. But that doesn't mean that the journey to today was easy. Fast forward to a marriage and a couple of months living in the Virginia DC area, learning French. I then moved to Morocco for the very first time in my whole entire life of actually traveling abroad as well. Moving overseas was never something I thought I would actually do, but I will say that a life of travel is something I did in fact envision. I just never thought that it would be something that was possible for me. A young black girl, from Denver, Colorado. Life does move fast and sometimes we don't think about the wishes, hopes and dreams that we might have as children or young adults. But once you really settle down and really think about where your life has come, you go, I did actually dream about this or I did actually wish or write this down or manifest this. Like, it's pretty cool. And before we move any further, I know most people are going to tell me, you know, you didn't have to move abroad if you didn't want to or if you didn't feel like that was something that you could do. Um, but it was something that was right for my family at the time because with my husband and what he does, he works for the US government, which is the less fancy term for diplomat. Um, and so that was the place that we were assigned and that was the place that we moved to. So my very first time traveling abroad was to move to Morocco. And I dealt with a lot while I was in Morocco. During my first couple of weeks, even months there, I was depressed at times, very homesick. I even racked up like a thousand dollar bill because I didn't know that as travelers, you should switch out your SIM card. I think my saving grace was having this YouTube channel where I could transition a little bit from that natural hair content that I was doing early on in my YouTube days to sharing my experiences as, I guess, an expat. I didn't even know that I was really an expat back in the day. I was just like, I'm this black girl that's living in Morocco and I'm homesick and I'm gonna talk to a camera about how I'm feeling. Like th those were the videos that I was making back in the day. Another positive aspect of my time early on in Morocco that really saved me from going crazy and just being extremely, extremely homesick and depressed was the job that I had teaching local staff that worked with the US government, English and professional development. And it was really, really great because I not only got to work and teach, which teaching is one of my many passions, I also got a chance to build relationships and friendships with people that I really admire and still admire to this day. To really acclimate myself, it took me literally getting out into the world, into Casablanca and walking around and exploring where I lived and the surrounding areas, taking taxis, just getting into the groove of life in Casablanca. I think for me, what 
is important when I am moving abroad and you know living this expat life is finding my identity and for me I have to find my identity multiple times and that's because I am what's considered a trailing spouse and that means my life is more tied to what my husband is doing for work and I always say this this is not a surprise we move for the work first we move for my husband's job first and then everything else falls into play and that includes me and what I do for work as well so having a YouTube channel and social media platform has always helped me stay sane because this has always been a constant. I can take my camera anywhere and usually find internet anywhere and this helps me kind of fulfill some of those aspects of my life where I need a little bit of purpose here and there. But then again, YouTube is hard too. Growing on YouTube is very hard and so I struggle with that. Too. All right, so let's get back onto the expat trajectory. We moved to Hyderabad, India, and this is when I was a little more open with you guys. I actually was like, hey, like there are so many people here in Hyderabad that I can share that I'm actually in Hyderabad. So I did a lot of YouTube content in Hyderabad, but I would say that when it comes to the stages of being an expat, I had my honeymoon phase really, really easily. We actually stayed in a hotel when we first moved to India and it was really nice, but you can only stay in a hotel with two people for so long before you drive each other nuts. So that was what that life was like for the first like two to three weeks. And then we ended up moving into our apartment that we lived in for two years. And during that time, you know, of course, there was culture shock and all of that stuff. But I think I got over that pretty quickly because living in Casablanca, Morocco, it was basically like five times the amount of life in Hyderabad because of the amount of people. But for the most part, I felt like I didn't feel so culturally shocked like I did in Morocco. In Morocco, I felt like I didn't leave the house for a couple days because I just didn't want to go outside. Everything was loud. There were too many noises. Like I just was like, I am just overly sensitized at this point. And when I moved to India where it was also very loud, I was just like, this is life. So I acclimated to India as a whole and Hyderabad as a whole very, very easy. And don't get me wrong, as an expat, there are some things that, you know, can be frustrating, especially because it's your regular life. But I would say I struggled mostly with me during that time early on in India because I was not comfortable with me. I mean, I left another place where I had a job that I was pretty fulfilled and, and happy with and then transitioning again. I'm not good with transition or change and at first everything is peachy and rosy but it really came down to me and how i acclimated to my new environment if that makes sense it just was really difficult for me to adjust it was really difficult for me to find my purpose and find my why and find my happiness and i think too where we lived in india was a little more secluded compared to where I lived in Morocco. Like I mentioned, I felt like I could get out and walk around Casablanca so, so easily. But when it came to Hyderabad, it was a little more work to get out and to like see the city. I wasn't really able to walk because Hyderabad is just so large, but I was able to, you know, finally walk around my neighborhood. I had a friend that lived nearby and she was great. We ended up taking walks, just the two of us, to different places around the area. And I think that really helped me find my groove. It helped me to enjoy my neighborhood a lot. And there were some undesirable places as well, some places where there were maybe piles of trash and other things that were in the vicinity of where I would be walking. But after you walk that one or two times, you get used to it and you're like, okay, that's there, but the store is there as well and there is the nice fruit vendor or the nice store clerk that now knows me by name or now at least smiles at me when I walk by or that is now receptive to me because they know I live in the area. So I think for me, it took a while to find my routine and to find my groove and to find my happy. It was me giving myself grace and giving myself time 
and the space to not be okay for a while and then to move into where I needed to be to really come into who I was supposed to be at the time. And I don't know if this is the case with other trailing spouses or people that are kind of attached to a spouse who has that work life and that purpose, but that was the case for me. And now that I know that I go through these super weird phases when I move to a new place, I am aware and now these are things that I can expect and or correct before I get to like super low points in my life where I'm just not happy. Something that I like to say is for me, you know, we've talked a lot about purpose in this video. Purpose to me is separate from expat life. Like moving to a place like India or Morocco, yeah, it gives you purpose. It gives you a goal, right? But for me in particular, I need other things in my life to shape who I am and give me an identity other than just being an expat because I think sometimes being an expat, in my opinion, is limiting because then I'm like, okay, what else am I? I've done a lot of work on myself. I have done a lot of like soul searching and honestly, I think this video is that in a way as well because me not being able to share why we move abroad and how we move abroad and what my role is in this moving abroad process with my husband and I has made me feel like I've been stifled in a way. And I've done that to myself. My husband has always said that I could share what we do, but I've been nervous to do so. So before this gets too long, because I totally forgot to share with you all what I did in India for work as well. So early on, I did a lot of content creation. I made tons of videos and just content everywhere on the internet. And I also taught English online. And this was thanks to um, my good friend, Jazzy Moss, who is Black Digital Nomad here on YouTube. She um, encouraged me to apply to an online English teaching program. And then I got a job with my husband's organization the US government working with American expats and their families to help them acclimate to India. Um, I did work through education, employment opportunities, and a bunch of other stuff. I even had a weekly newsletter that I posted and it was rewarding, especially during COVID-19. I did so much more than I thought that I could. I had so many responsibilities and doing this particular job really gave me a different type of purpose and I was able to serve people in ways that I never thought that I would. And so I was very thankful to one, have a job during this tough, tough time, but also have something to do because I'm a person that needs to keep busy, especially during tough times and give me a job, give me a purpose and I will do my best to fulfill the role. So my camera already shut off once. I think we're going to end it here. I feel like I've said a lot, but probably not even scratched the surface of expat life, the difficulties of being an expat and how most of the things don't actually have to do with the place that you're living in. Um, I've realized that a lot of the issues I've had have to do with me and my mental health and it's hard to be vulnerable, but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the experiences that I've had and I wouldn't trade them for anything. Despite the negativity that I have felt um, due to my own insecurities, my own lack of purpose, uh, my relationships with others and my husband, the countries that I've lived in, all of the things, all of the things, despite all of those things, I cannot wait to move abroad somewhere else again.